안녕하세요. 김인 코헤 백키니입니다. Hi, this is Kimmy Park from Kimmy k o h e and today I'm going to present you 20 Korean summer 필수템. 필수 means to be needed, required, compulsory. So you often hear that for 필수 숙제, so compulsory homework that you have to do. And tem is short for item, so 필수 tem, required item. So in English you would just say must-haves. So I'm going to present you 20 must-haves for the summer in Korea. These items, I'm going to show them to you in sort of a random order. There are things that I haven't really seen so much in Europe, and that's why I find it interesting that they are very commonly used item here in Korea in the summer. And you can find those usually in supermarkets or Or, you know, just in everybody's favorite shop in Korea. Daiso! <laughs> So, um, let's get started. This is a cooling spray. Cooling spray. I had heard of these from an ex-K-pop idol or K-pop trainee who became a YouTuber. I can't remember exactly who it was. But basically, she was saying that they are using cooling spray to keep the idols cool during performances. I just thought, oh, it must be a water spray or something like that. But no, it's not. You have like a big format like this for 2,000 or a smaller one for 1,000. The way it works is that you have your t-shirt or your trousers or whatever item you know, clothing that you want to use. And you need to shake it. And you need to spray it in the parts that get warm. So especially your back, your armpit area, along your thighs, etc. And you want it to be soaked. So you do like that on the whole area. And it smells minty. I don't know if you can see, but the fabric is wet. I'm not doing the whole t-shirt right now. And it does keep you fresh, like it does keep you cool. So normally you should be wearing that t-shirt. But you don't spray it directly on yourself. You just spray it on your clothing and then your clothes are gonna feel cooler for a while. I bought it just to try it. It works fairly well and so far it hasn't stained any of the t-shirts I've tried it on. The next item is a cooling scarf. And these are very, very popular here. So it's just, as the name indicates, a sort of a scarf that you can cool either by just uh, wetting them in cold water or you can just freeze them and you just put them around your neck and you just keep them like that. I just see a lot of people who are just going for a walk. It's very common to see on hikers and people in festivals are using those a lot. And the funniest thing is that I've even seen that they sell some for dogs. Our next item is a fan or several I should say because you might be very familiar with these fans. These types of fans, puche in Korean, are very common here in Korea still. And I don't know if you know, but also in Korean culture, they use a lot of fans in dancing. So you have something called puche chum, which is a, literally translated as a fan dance. These ones you would know. But in Korea, it's very common to have plastic fans. This is one from 80s with Mingi. Normally you have a hole. I haven't pursed the hole, but like you have a hole here. And I've got several of those plastic ones. You can buy some for 1,000 in Daiso. But it's very common to receive some of those as advertising. And sometimes people are just giving them out like flyers in the street. Or I got another one at a festival and it was like one of the things that you could win was winning a fan. They work pretty well. Noisy a bit. Bye, Mingi. But the most common types of fan that you would find here are electric mini fans. These are on sale absolutely everywhere in the summer. They are just mini fans that you can carry around with you. You can charge them. You can find some of a whole lot of different sizes. There are like tiny, tiny ones that you can have as a keychain, mini portable ones like this, slightly bigger ones, some that you can plug into your laptop. So it's just like, as you're working, it just fans you in the face. Yeah, you got loads of different ones for a whole range of prices, usually from 5,000 to, you know, extra, depending what you buy. This one is pretty simple with only three types of fanning power and it makes a blue light. Some of them can have a whole range of lights, etc. Some of them are not noisy. So it depends. You can find them in loads of different shops, but you know, Daiso, Artbox, all of these. I bought this one in a bookstore for 8,000, I think, or 9,000. How cute is it? And you can often hear all the Koreans being like, oh, to 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 and they're just fanning themselves. And they don't just have some like that, they also have some that you can put around your neck and it just fans you directly in the face without you having to hold it. Kultoshi, or in English, UV protect and cool wristlet. Personally, I just call them UV sleeves. And what they are is our extra sleeves. Sometimes it goes also on your hands, so it goes up to here, just to your fingers with a hole for your thumb. And it usually comes in black or white. They are very common here in Korea. Like, I've seen people just keeping packs of those in their car. People just use them when they are 
out and about not so much if they're just you know walking in the street but if they're going to be working outside if they're going hiking if they're doing any type of outdoor activity like sport and such you see them having it these were three thousand i've also bought some for two thousand and others for five so it depends the type they are it's namsung young so i bought some men's one by mistake for a woman it would be written yo song young but i don't think it matters particularly that's what it looks like and basically you just slip it on so you see a lot of like workers having those it's just an extra sleeve sometimes you just see on people like they just have you know the t-shirt ends here and this goes up to here i mean it's pretty good because people don't necessarily think about applying so much sun cream when they are doing outdoors activities and it just allows to protect you from the uv you know they're very sun conscious here in korea and protecting their skin against the sun which I have been convinced to start doing since I first came to Korea in 2016 because they do have a much better skin than most people in Europe and they age better. Is it really cooling? I don't think so. It's not as hot as you would expect it to be because it's, you know, like just extra layer of, you know, it's kind of like um, nylon, I suppose, or something. But it's not exactly cooling, so sometimes it can be a little bit hot. Um, but they are very practical. Personally, I like it. And I think as long as you have a sort of like longer t-shirt, you don't really see that you have one under it. It looks like a continuity of your t-shirt. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty good. I usually wear those when I go hiking and it's really sunny. Next, we have some more sun protection. You can have the sort of protection that you put around your hat to protect the side of your face or, you know, it's almost masked that you look like a ninja. Going <laughs> during, I don't know what, but you do see those, especially when you're hiking. You have these ajumma, a lot of ajumas, but ajushis too are wearing that, so they are, you can't see anything. They have the protection up to here, then they have the hat and the side protection, and maybe even the sunglasses, so you literally see nothing of their faces. As I said, they take sun protection very seriously. Next, we have some more sun protection, and these are sun patches. They're only 1000 and they are a single use, but as you can see on the lady, you just put these patches on your face and it's supposed to do two things it's supposed to keep you cool and it's supposed to push the uv out it's supposed to last for six hours i've definitely seen some people using those at festivals or while hiking i'll try those and let you know it feels cool when you put it like a bit like a yeah just a silicone face mask would feel cool <laughs> i feel very self-conscious I know that they even have some, it looks like face mask, like for, you know, like COVID, but you have holes for your mouth and your nose because the, the whole point is not being a protection mask. Well, at least, yeah, it's a protection mask, but against the UV, so you can have one that just covers you like this. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy it because I think it just looks too creepy and I don't think I would ever wear it. That's a whole other level of sun protection right here. And while we are on a theme of patches, you also have another type of patch, which is not for sun, but just cooling. And I've seen people using those as well in festival mostly. So it's just like a white patch that you stick on your forehead and it's supposed to keep you cool. I don't know how efficient they are. I've seen it once, I think in Daiso, but I didn't buy any and I didn't see it again. So anyway, but I have these to show you. These are not exactly the same one I just mentioned. These are Mozartan Pende. These are sweat patches. So you put it on your hat to protect from the sweat from your forehead and you can just exchange them. I know that my caps are usually in the front. They're full of foundation and sun cream. So I have to wash them pretty regularly. And I guess this is supposed to avoid that. And you can see at the back that it's also used for shirts. And we stay on theme with these armpit sweat pads. So for 1000 you get three pairs. It's pretty easy to imagine from the picture. They kind of like like this and you put it at your armpit level. And I had heard of those from items used by idols to not have sweat marks on their clothes when they are performing. And we continue on the theme of armpits. These are not deodorant directly, but they are deodorant wipes. Here you can see deo tissue. Tissue is a wet wipe and deo is from deodorant. And Koreans don't really use deodorant so much because Korean have this gene that is fairly common in some Asian ethnicities, but is mostly common in Koreans. Their sweat don't smell bad. I swear it's true. <laughs> Not because I have it, I don't have it, unfortunately, but my mom has it. It's true, she just doesn't smell bad in her armpits ever. Like, we've done this test where she put the same long sleeve under t-shirt thingy for a whole month, every day, and it still didn't smell bad. She never puts deodorant or anything, like never, ever. And she just doesn't smell sweat. It's um, it's a thing, but I, I unfortunately did not inherit it from her. 
so I've been played at the genetic game and I could use some of those so these are pretty good for having on the go and if you smell bad you can just wipe your armpits with it and it will help I've tried them it is pretty efficient in getting rid of the smell that you already have but they're not particularly good at long-term deodorants just so you know but it's better than nothing and especially you know because it's so uncomfortable when you smell bad and then you don't dare raising your arms and everything like these particular ones smell very flowery and you have 15 for 1000 that's really hot so mosquito rackets is just needed it's a wandan pisutem korea it's so damp and hot in the summer and it's really 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 full of mosquitoes and you know you're never gonna manage to just do it with your hands so i'm pretty sure these also exist elsewhere because i know they exist in europe but yeah the best 5000 won you're gonna spend trust me and because there are so many mosquitoes here in the summer pretty much everywhere even from here in this nice flat to my very cheap bushy one everywhere has mosquito nets on the windows but what can happen especially if you live in an older place is that you have holes in them and that brings us to our next item mosquito net repair you just have these little square of different sizes that you can just stick on the hole or you can buy a whole tape that you can sort of fix a different area where you have holes slippers these are mine I didn't buy them here I brought those from Europe I don't know if you know this but Fila used to be Italian Fila was created in Italy and it was really really fashionable back when I was in middle school and high school and then it sort of like disappeared and then it's been bought by Korean became a Korean brand became super trendy here again and in general is trendy in the rest of the world so that's a little story but anyway it doesn't matter slippers <laughs> and slippers are absolutely essential in korea at all times they use slippers for everything for the simple reason that you need to take off your shoes pretty much all the time it's becoming less and less common but you had a lot of restaurants where you had to take off your shoes you had some buildings where you had to take off your shoes when you enter and they give you slippers obviously you take off your shoes when you enter somebody's house so slippers are very practical so you would have some outdoor slippers indoor slippers, bathroom slippers so people wear those especially in summer because you have the monsoon your feet are gonna get wet anyway so you might as well just wear plastic slippers but to be honest they also wear those in winter as well not so much as regular shoes but it's very common to see you just see a lot of people especially going outside for going to a convenience store going for a smoke etc they just have socks and slippers oh damn so oh. sexy <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have slippers but you have your real shoes on you can buy shoe slippers shoes protection i mean i'm not gonna lie these are not common in the street in the monsoon that can be useful. My next item is an umbrella. Obviously needed because it's a rainy season and it's raining a lot, but it's not just that. It's a UV umbrella. What it means is that you have a UV protection on the umbrella. You can recognize it by the fact that it's black inside, although not all of them are, because I have another one that I bought in Japan that is just a yellow umbrella on both sides. And I think they have some in, in Daiso as well that is just one color, but most of those UV one would be black like this inside. It really is a lot more common than you would think. People just walk around in the street with their umbrella to protect themselves from the sun. It's very common to see during picnics and festivals. I had bought one during a festival and to be honest, it was really a good idea because you're just sitting in the middle and you can't really protect yourself from from the sun and this was a lifesaver for our skin and our just general well-being because it was just so hot and they are allowed umbrellas are allowed on the country of europe where you're not allowed to bring umbrellas in festivals because people will just fight each other with umbrellas but koreans are more civilized and they just sit on the floor and have their little umbrellas korean festival is so much better <laughs> Highly recommend getting one of those when you're here um, because even if you just don't want to use it for yourself, like you can put it on the floor and you put all your bags under it so they don't get as hot. If you're looking for one in Europe and they're not just going to be 5,000 won, but as far as I know, Uniqlo sells some. And while we're on the topic of picnics, my next item is a picnic blanket. Something to know is that Korean people don't sit on the floor directly. Usually they just don't. They would always put a picnic blanket, something, even newspaper. They just don't sit directly on the grass or you know it's fairly rare i haven't really seen it that's why if you go in a park or at the han river in the evening like everybody's walking around with their little blanket so they can put it on the floor so koreans are very fond of picnic and going to sit in parks and such it's very common in festivals to have a picnic zone where people just you know as they arrive they just put their picnic mat on the floor put their stuff on it and then they leave and nobody steal their place like 
it even keeps their spot for them. So you, if you if you arrive first and then you just go away and do something else or go, you know, in the mosh pit. No, there's no mosh pit. <laughs> there's no mosh pit in Korea. But in the, you know, close to the stage. Nobody's gonna steal your exact spot where your picnic blanket is. And that's fantastic, cause that would not happen in Europe. People would just steal your spots, steal your stuff. Yeah, it just, it's not possible. But in Korea, people are very respectful of other people's things. Even if it's flying away, your neighbors will help and put it back for you. And this brings me to my next item, which I've also seen a lot in picnics in parks and in festivals, picnic tables and chairs. In Europe, if you think picnic table, you would think the huge table because you are like a huge group. You're organizing a whole party. But in Korea, it's not like that. When there are at least just two people, they just bring their little papsang. So papsang is just a eating table and usually they're foldable and you can buy lighter ones to to just bring on picnics. You know, I've told you they have their little picnic blankets and they have, on top of it, they put their little picnic tables, which are four sitting on the floor around it. So they're not very tall, they're just small little ones. You can even buy some specifically for picnic that have folders and they are lighter. And you can even buy some that are in card box that are meant to be used just once and then you could throw away, especially for festivals. And that's the same thing for chairs. You can buy inflatable chairs or card box one as well. Because people sit on the floor, it's not a whole chair, it's really just the back rest part and a bit of a flat surface. You sit on it so it, it will hold the back rest. It's the same principle as like what I'm doing right here, like a lot of Koreans sit directly on the floor, I'm sitting on the floor right now, but they're resting the back against the sofa instead of sitting on the sofa and having, you know, their legs falling down. They just have their legs here on the floor. Next we have a watermelon box. Yeah, I know, I know. It's not really a piece with them, but just I thought it was funny that they are selling those. But what I really want to say is how common watermelons are in Korea in the summer. They are produced in Korea, they're huge. And you can finally buy real juice when you buy watermelon juice in the summer because a lot of the drinks that you get in Korea when they say juice, it's not fresh juice. So at least with the watermelon in the summer, often it is just bits of watermelon that they are making into a juice or a smoothie. However, something to know, if you are like me and you don't like everything to be extra sugary like literally everything is in Korea you have to tell them when you're buying the watermelon juice that you don't want extra sugar in it because they will pump like three good pumps of sugar into your juice they always do it <laughs> am I getting angry about this <laughs> yeah if you order watermelon juice and you just want a healthy juice slash smoothie ask them Soltang pe juiceo. Soltang is sugar, pe is to take off. Juiceo is please do for me. So please remove the sugar for me when you're ordering. Or you just say no sugar. They will understand. No sugar. The next things are bamboo pillows. In the summer to keep cool, you have some special pillows made out of bamboo. I found some in Daiso that just look like regular pillows, just harder. And they also had some slippers made out of bamboo. But you have these traditional Korean bamboo body pillows. They are called juk, which means bamboo, and buing, which means wife. And so it's your bamboo wife. <laughs> And it's one of these long body pillows, but just made out of rigid bamboo, meaning that if you are sleeping on top of it, it allows for some air to circulate and you can keep cool in the hot summer night. It's called Bamboo Wife because you would be hugging it. Although the name is a little bit contested and people are saying that there is a sexist term and so they're asking for the name to be changed. But as far as I know, it's the only way it's called. So I haven't really seen any of those in a particular shop, but I know that you can find some online and you can see some of those as well in museums that are showing traditional Korean lifestyle and I had heard of those in one of my Korean textbooks and last but not least are the UV visors so you have several types you have just the one that are just very long and like up to here and they're pink or purple and worn by Ajumas or you have the full-on visor you can close just like Darth Vader Yeah, these are supposed to protect you from the UV. Those one, the long one that you don't close up, they're definitely very common here. And that concludes the list of our 20 Korean Pilsutem must-have items. Which one would you want to have? Which one were the most surprising? Let me know everything in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!